The Armenian Genocide is the first genocide of the 20th century, beginning on April 24, 1915. Over 1.5 million innocent Armenians were murdered by the Ottoman Turks. Armenians were being tortured, slaughtered, raped, thrown into concentration camps, and marched to their deaths during these times. This article that was posted in the New York Times on September 24, 1915, only five months after the start of the genocide, it was already being reported that over 500,000 Armenians have already perished due to the Turkish deportation order and the resulting war of extinction. All Armenian families will have their own stories of how their ancestors survived and what they went through, and this is my family's. It begins with these two people, Bizar and Hagop. They're my great-grandparents. In our family, they were called Nene and Dede. I'll start by telling you my Nene's story, which begins in 1910, when she was first born. Shortly after she was born, her family moved to Dikranagert, which used to be in historic Armenia, but is now in present-day Turkey, and is circled in black on this map. Once the genocide broke out, and soldiers began to march into their town, they started to murder any living Armenian that they could find. The priests were being gathered and burned alive in churches. Nene's father told her mother to go and hide with Nene and her baby sister, in order to protect themselves. While they were hiding from the soldiers, they could hear people around them screaming as they were slaughtered. Nene's father was one of them, and she had to sit there with her mother and baby sister and listen to her own father getting murdered. When the baby started to cry, Nene's mother knew she had to cover the baby's mouth to muffle the cries so that they would not be found and murdered. Once the soldiers left, it was then that Nene's mother realized that she had accidentally killed her own baby by suffocating it. Nene later in life recalled how no mother should ever have to go through that and how horrifying the whole ordeal was. They were also fortunate enough to be able to hide on the property of their Turkish neighbors, who were their friends, who took them in for about a year or two. It is not known when exactly, but at some point when they were running away and fleeing, Nene was hit in the head by a Turkish soldier, resulting in permanent hearing loss in one of her ears. And sometime after all of that, Nene was taken as a slave by a Turkish family, where she was physically and sexually abused, but somehow, her mother Sarah was able to save her, and they were able to flee to Egypt. Now, I will tell you my Dede's story. He was born and raised in the same town my Nene was, Dikranagert. He was the youngest of eight siblings and had seven older sisters. Once the atrocities reached them, his father instructed him to go run into the mountains and hide. He ended up hiding in a small cave behind his house and from there watched in horror as he saw all of his family members being murdered. He saw the Turkish soldiers rape his sisters before senselessly murdering them. He even saw their family priest get crucified. While making his escape, he could smell the burning flesh of the Armenians that were being burned alive in the churches. Once he finally escaped, he eventually joined the Armenian division of the French Foreign Legion. In this picture, he is the one on the lower right-hand corner kneeling down. This was taken some time in 1919. Once it was all over, he made his way to Egypt where he met my Nene. Their paths crossed in Egypt when Nene's mother heard about a man in his late 20s who was looking for a wife, and she asked him if he'd marry her 14-year-old daughter. He accepted, and they had a good marriage, and later they all moved to the Armenian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. Here is where they settled in and started a family together. They raised their family here for many years and were very happy. This is an actual picture of where their family lived and where they raised their children. It shows how far we have come and looking back at pictures of where they once were. This is a picture of my nena on the left standing with my grandma, Mary, on the right. This was taken in Jerusalem before they moved to the U.S. Unfortunately, Dede passed away in 1958 before they were able to move to the U.S. But after seven long years of being on the immigration wait list, they were finally able to go to the U.S. as refugees and move to Chicago from Jerusalem. In Chicago, that is where they started a new chapter in their lives, and to this day, we still live there. Nana passed away in 1994, so unfortunately, I was never able to meet either of my great-grandparents. But the stories that have been told to me by my grandparents and parents will stick with me my entire life, and are stories that I will pass on to my children. Some of the details in these stories are not fully known as to when exactly they happened, because whenever Nana's kids or grandchildren would ask about it, my Nana would respond with, don't make me pick open an old scab. And when my mom asked her about it one time, she told her how no child should hear this stuff and that these words shall never be repeated of what happened to her. These stories were pieced together by my mother and her cousins, all getting little pieces of the story throughout their lives and then coming together to put it all together. To this day, even with the extensive amount of evidence that points to it, Turkey, the U.S., and many other countries still refuse to acknowledge the Armenian Genocide for what it truly is, a genocide. Turkey continues to deny that it took place and that it was simply just a war. 
That is why these stories are so important to share. Being a descendant of an Armenian genocide survivor and having that grief constantly weighing you down is a burden that all Armenians live with and one that no one asked for. This is who I am and I'm proud to be an Armenian.